can I get through a video review of the Nissan GTR Nismo without mentioning the Nürburgring? That is the question. Let me explain why I just got kicked in the bottom. You see, there's this thing where Car has decided that if I mention that racetrack in Germany, in any video, I get kicked in the arse because it's just a real boring motoring journalist geeky fact. But you can't be kicking me in the arse when I'm just setting the scene for the viewer. If I mention it again, then I'm gonna get kicked in the bottom. It's gonna be hard to do because when you're reviewing this car, you want to make reference to that place and in this video i'm actually going to talk you around the upgrades that you get with the nismo version of the gtr over the standard car i'm going to tell you what i like about it what i don't like about it i am of course going to take it for a bit of a hoon and i'm going to time it over 0 to 60 miles an hour and the full stunning quarter mile anyway i'm matt watson and you're watching car wow yeah. buying a new car then head to car wow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price car wow your one-stop car buying comparison site Let's start this video by talking about the price. Now, I hope you're sitting down because you're going to need to be. You see, this Nissan costs £180,000, which is just insane. I'm going to come clean. You can get this car on lease through CarWow, but there are no savings on it. <laughs> Bad luck. So instead, what I've done, I found an offer on a really good four-wheel drive performance car, which is way more affordable, that I really like. I've got a decent saving on it. So what I've done, I'll put a link to that up there. I'm going to tell you what it is. I'm going to leave it for a bit of a surprise. So click on that link to go check that out. Alternatively, if you want to check out the latest car offers through CarWow after this video, just simply Google Help Me CarWow and my team and I will help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers. Let's talk about the design upgrades you get with the Nismo version of the GTR over the standard car. Obviously, it's instantly recognisable as a GTR, but then there's these added bits. The most obvious one at the rear is this huge carbon fibre wing. Look at that. It's even got a little brake light integrated into it. That's cool. What you can't see is that this boot lid is also carbon fibre. It's just been painted over. There's some more carbon fibre here. This lower bumper area and splitter, all carbon fibre and obviously you've got your Nismo badging. The exhausts are the same as on the normal GTR, so you've got titanium exhaust system, really wide, look at those quad pipes, but actually inside there's some smaller pipes. Makes it look really shouty. Down the side, yet more carbon fibre. The bumper extends around the side, and then you've got the side skirt there with the red stripe in it as well. You've got 20 inch forged alloy wheels, so lighter than the standard cars, and carbon fibre roof. Nismo has another red stripe here on the door mirror. Don't get that on the standard car. Moving to the front, you've got these vents here in the wings. Once again, carbon fibre. These help let pressurised air out from the wheel arches, reduces your lift. Around the front, we have carbon fibre from bonnet and front splitter with, once again, the red stripe from Nismo and Nismo badging. And you probably noticed as well, these vents in the bonnet, they're made out of carbon fibre. But that's because the whole bonnet is carbon fibre. It's just that those bits are painted. Oh my gosh, this is one aggressive looking car with plenty of carbon fiber. Let's go check out the inside. So there is more carbon fiber in here. Yes, got the door open. Thanks for telling me, Nissan. Most notably here, look, we've got carbon backed bucket seats. They are lovely, made by Recaro, exclusive to the Nismo GTR and they hold your body so very well. There's also carbon fibre here on the centre console and a Nismo badge there. You've got Alcantara on the steering wheel with this centre marker. There's also Alcantara on the dash, that's lovely. And Alcantara for the roof lining, which is also lovely. Then there's some red stitching to signify that you're in the Nismo version. You've got Nismo on the rev counter and it's a red rev counter. If I'm brutally honest with you, this car is feeling its age on the inside. No place is that more evident than this infotainment system. It's horrible. It's just so slow, laggy. The graphics are really low def and it hasn't even got Android Auto. Apple CarPlay, yes, but no Android. Anyway, let's move on to the back. Let's see what it's like. It's not gonna be great, is it? Here in the back of the GTR. Um, let me just move this out of the way so you can see what's happening. I'm gonna do, oh God, I'm gonna have to shut this door. Oh. Shut up. Let's see what knee room's like. I'm just gonna pull this back and hope I don't crush my knees. Come on. Oh, actually I have just about got enough knee room a finger's worth, but it does feel like my legs are trapped. I can hardly move them. So if you had to go any kind of distance, you're gonna end up with a deep vein thrombosis. And then headroom, you can see for yourself. I don't need to explain that, do I? And it's not great having your head against the back window. But you don't buy a Nismo GTR 
to be giving passengers a lift. It's not an Uber car, is it? Anyway, let's go and check out the boot now. If I can just extract myself from this car. Oh, my feet are like wedged into the seat. Come on. I hope I'm not gonna have a fall. So look at this. I wasn't lying, was I? Carbon fiber. Look at this space you've got here. Now for a performance car, it's not bad at all. 315 liters. Yes, there's a big load lip to lift stuff over, but I'll forgive the car that because a Porsche 911 Turbo's boot, it's only 132 litres. An Audi R8, 112 litres. Really impressive though. To be fair, a McLaren GT's boot has 570 litres. And if you'd like to see my full in-depth video review of that car, I'll put a link, just pop it out now, top right-hand corner of the screen, you can go watch that video if you want to. And that brings me on to five annoying things about the Nissan GTO Nismo. You see, McLaren GT, its starting price is actually £17,000 less than this car. Lamborghini Huracan, 15 grand less. A Porsche 911 Turbo S, £25,000 less. In fact, if you get the normal GTR in prestige trim, which pretty much has all you want on it, and loads of power, that's 90 grand. So half the price of this. It's insane. Part of the reason for this car's high price is because of all this extra carbon fibre. And it does help reduce the weight albeit by only 41 kilos, which is about the same weight as half a man. And anyway, this car still weighs in at 1,700 kilos, so it's no further weight. Bizarrely for a track-focused car, if you turn the stability control all the way off, you invalidate its warranty. You might be wondering then, why do Nissan even let you turn the stability control off in the first place? Well, apparently that's to help you get out of snow. But that raises the question, how would they know that you were caught in snow in the first place when you did turn it off. It's all a bit bizarre. This is a 3.8 litre twin turbo V6. It's been hand built by one of only five master craftsmen in the world qualified to work on the car. It has 650 newton metres of torque. 600 horsepower, it's really impressive. So you're probably wondering why the heck have you put the engine in the bad section of the review? Well, the simple reason is that while 600 horsepower is impressive, it's only 30 horsepower more than the standard GTR. And you'd think that for all that extra cash, they could have given you more horsepower. We all know that this engine can take it. Why not give us 700 horsepower? We paid for it. Well, we haven't, but someone will have. This huge rear wing may improve downforce, but yeah, it knackers rearward visibility. Can you see? Or not see, as the case may be. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. What you see here are the largest brakes ever fitted to a Japanese production car. You've got 410 millimeter carbon ceramic discs gripped by six piston calipers. At the back, you've got 390 millimeter carbon ceramic discs gripped by four piston calipers. Also, the Nismo version of the GTR gets these special Dunlop tires, which have been specifically produced for this very car. The Nismo gets uprated Bill Stein three mode adaptive dampers as standard. The Nismo version of the GTR has a recalibrated six-speed dual-clutch automatic gearbox for even quicker shifts over the standard GTR. The body panels have been given some extra bonding to make them stiffer, more rigid. As a result, the Nismo GTR's body is 10% stiffer than the standard car to make it more responsive and improve the handling and all that kind of stuff. The Nismo gets retuned steering to make it even more responsive than the standard GTRs. Finally then, let's see what this GTR Nismo is like to drive. Well, it's a little bit like this. Crap! Shit! Oh, God! Oh. <laughs> May have sounded like I was having a slightly painful orgasm, <laughs> but that pretty much sums up this car. In fact, let's have a multiple one. So, oh. <laughs> oh, Woo. it's nuts! First thing, this engine. So what I didn't tell you about the engine earlier is that the turbochargers come from the GT racing car and they just spool up so quick. So watch this, second gear, around 3,000 RPM. It's on straight away, on, hey, here we go again. My goodness. The engine is lovely. I've always loved the engine in the GTR, and in this Nismo, it's especially good. Oh, it's just the thrust you get from it. Nuts. Now, all of that would count for nothing if this thing was just all like kind of point and squirt, but it's not. 
the feel you get through it, through your bottom. You know how much grip it's got and it will move around beneath you, but it gives you so much confidence <laughs> to just... God, I just realised how quick I was going then. You go around corners in this car so much quicker than you ever thought you could do. And there's so much confidence from that steering, which is just so pointy and sharp. It's hydraulically assisted. None of your electrical nonsense of most modern cars. And as a result, it feels pure, you feel connected. It's starting to get the price, 180,000 pounds. I'm driving on a closed road, well, it's actually a test track. And I can experience the performance here, really enjoy this car. And you can feel the differences then between the Nismo version and the normal car when you're really pushing it, because it's set up so well, this thing. On the road though, hard to tell the difference of really, feel the benefits of the Nismo because speed limits, 70 miles an hour. This thing does 70 miles an hour without even thinking about it. Once again, revving the change of gear. Look at that, it's just boom, boom, boom. That's where you really appreciate a dual clutch automatic compared to say some of these tall converter automatics that BMW is putting into its latest M cars. You do just get that rifle bomb chase, bang, bang, bang. It's so intense. <laughs> Godzilla really is a proper, proper animal. Now there's no point being this quick if you can't stop well. So let's do a brake test from 70 miles an hour in this car, see how long it takes to stop. Here we go, let's do it now. That's both feet on pedals. Right, what we got? It stopped in 43 meters. Now I recently did a brake test in the new BMW M three and then four and if you want to see how long they took to break click on the pop-up banner up there to go watch that video now i'm gonna launch the car not six over the sunny quarters in a bit save me for that but first let's continue so i'm gonna back it off a bit this is where you feel that it's a bit archaic a bit old-fashioned so the bilstein dampers in this car actually make it feel a bit more sophisticated over bumps like round town and the standard gtr it's firm and you get jostled about then over speed bumps but there's a real delicacy to the way it just irons out the small imperfections it doesn't fidget too much firm but fair excessively firm but still sort of fair it's probably the best way to sum it up but it does get tiring after a while another thing that gets tiring is the turning circle, which is awful. Then there's all the mechanical noises, which I really do like. You put it into gear, it's like the clunking of the disc when you're moving around. You still hear a little bit. It's not as bad as on the early GTRs. And you get out on the motorway and this thing's just like droning on and droning on. And uh, well, I'm driving around, you've got people working on film sets and all the construction guys are just like watching this car go past. In fact, when I turned up at the track earlier today, the guy on security was like, oh man, Nismo GTR, my favorite car in the whole wide world ever. This thing stands out, but that could also get on your nerves. To really enjoy this car, and the Nismo version in particular, you have to get yourself onto a track. For day-to-day -day ownership, Porsche 911 Turbo S, get one of them. And if you want to see more about that car, click on the pop-out banner up there, the top right-hand corner of the screen. Check out my review of that car, because it's immense. And the 0-60 time that I've had out of that car is incredible as well. Speaking of which, it's finally time to launch this beast, see what it'll do. What are you gonna do, Godzilla? Should we find out? Let's do it. Nissan says the GTR Nismo can do 0 to 16 2.5 seconds, but I wanna see what my specialist timing gear doth say. So I'm gonna launch, let's do it, let's find out. Oh, struggles for grip, you know. 0 to 60, 2.99 seconds, what's the standing quarter mile? 10.94. Traction wasn't great away from the line. Let's give it another go. All right, Godzilla, you gotta do a better job this time for the well-being of all the GTR fanboys watching, okay? Otherwise, in the comments, they'll be getting saltier than a tin of anchovies washed down with a glass of seawater. You got this. We're going sideways a bit again. Oh, not 60, 2.96 seconds. Standing quarter, 10.92. Oh well, there we go. You had your chance, you blew it. Okay, okay, just one more go, let's do it. That hook better, that hook better. Oh yes, 2.89 to 60. I'm gonna bottle the standing quarter though because this is too quick into this corner. <laughs> 2.89, it hooked. I don't think I'm gonna get much better than that and I definitely don't think I'm gonna do a 2.5. 
hopefully the van boys aren't too salty now. Maybe just like a bag of crisps. So then what's my final verdict on the Nissan GTR Nismo? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon if you're a GTR fan and you've got the money, go right ahead and buy this car because it is the ultimate GTR. However, for most people, you can get some serious supercars for the same amount of money. And personally, I'd rather have one of those. So I would avoid the GTR Nismo, just like I've avoided getting kicked in the ass for saying the Nürburgring in this video. <laughs> no, you're not catching me. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. Let me know some other videos you'd like me to do in the comments below. I will read through them, I promise you. Now, you might see a box there. Whatever you do, do not click on it. Do not click on that box because I can't promise where it's going to take you. Now, if you want to watch some more GTR related content, then just click on those video windows. What was that for? For earlier. Oh, yeah.